All right, welcome back, everybody. OK, so I heard that last uh, class on Monday, Scott gave a review of MATLAB. So I hope that that was useful for everybody. Um, I kind of skimmed over it and looked like he covered a lot of really good stuff. Um, and so we're going to keep building up proficiency in MATLAB by using it on examples. Uh, OK, so today and Friday, we're going to cover what I think is some of the most important and interesting material of the entire course. OK, so it's a little mathematical. But what we're going to see is that using eigenvalues and eigenvectors, we can get a geometric interpretation of the solution of any matrix system of first order ODEs. And this is extremely powerful. So this is the basis of feedback control theory, stability theory. Um, if you want to analyze a nonlinear system, you'll often linearize it about some fixed point, And you'll get a system of first order equations like this. And we'll want to understand the nature of those solutions in terms of eigenvalues and eigenvectors. Okay, So where linear algebra and ordinary differential equations meet is probably one of the most interesting uh, and powerful areas of math. Okay, Both of those fields are things that you've all taken before, but I really want to unify them in a way that you can start you know, using these on problems that you find interesting right now. Okay, So I'm going to start with some of the material that we covered last time, but a little bit more general. So now we're able to solve any higher order ODE, as long as it's linear, using the characteristic equation. right? So if I have some differential equation like uh, some coefficient times the nth derivative of x plus another coefficient, a n minus 1 times the n minus 1th derivative of x plus dot, 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 plus a 3x triple dot plus a 2x double dot plus a 1x dot plus a 0x equals 0. OK, so this is an extremely general differential equation. Um, in the last lecture, we cooked up a system with fourth derivatives by having spring, mass, spring, mass, like that. But if you think about like a rubber band or some elastic material or a polymer, right? there's really a continuum of springs and masses and dampers. And so very quickly, if we want to describe a real physical system, we might get thousands or millions or billions of orders uh, of differential equations, but that's fine. We know how to solve this now. OK, so we're going to try some solution x of t equals e to the lambda t. We know that any nth derivative of x is lambda to the n x. Pretty simple, right? We just keep getting these powers of lambda every time we take a derivative. And so this. Uh, differential equation, if we plug in e to the lambda t, we get a n lambda to the n plus a n minus 1 lambda to the n minus 1 plus dot, 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 plus a 3 lambda cubed, a 2 lambda squared, a 1 lambda plus a 0, everything times x of t, which is e to the lambda t. Okay, we're just plugging in e to the lambda t into this equation. And we get this great characteristic equation. Uh, so I'm just going to say this can only be equal to 0 when this polynomial is equal to 0. Okay, So this is my characteristic polynomial. Any German speakers in the audience? So what is the German word for, for characteristic? Well, at least an old one is eigen. OK, so eigen means latent or characteristic. So this characteristic equation is deeply, deeply connected to eigenvalues of something. OK, and we're going to look at that in a minute. OK, so this is a big nth order polynomial. In general, I don't have a closed form solution. I have to solve this numerically. But there are, in general, n lambdas that will solve this equation. OK, so in general, there will be n solutions 
and I'm going to call them lambda 1, lambda 2, dot, 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 all the way up to lambda n. Okay, there's going to be n numbers that solve this equation. They might be complex, there might be repeated eigenvalues, but there's going to be n of them, n roots of this polynomial. Okay? And so the solution, x at time t, is going to be written in terms of a linear combination of exponentials of these eigenvalues, or these lambda values. So x of t is going to be some constant times e to the lambda 1t, plus another constant e to the lambda 2t, plus dot, 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 plus some nth constant e to the lambda nt. Okay? And this is the general solution of this differential equation. Okay, so if I have my elastic medium or my fluid equation, and I have some millionth order ODE representing that system, I can find all of the eigenvalues, and I can write my solution x as a sum of e to all of those lambda t's. Okay? So if I even have one positive real part of any of these lambdas, if any of these lambdas are positive, then that term is going to blow up to infinity, and it's going to dominate all of my other terms. So any instability, any positive eigenvalues will always dominate and win. Okay? So if I want to really specify solutions of this equation in a system, like an actual system I'm working on, I need to know what these constants are. I need to know what the mixture of these different eigenvalues is in my problem for my initial conditions. So in general, you can use a vector of initial conditions like x at time 0, x dot at time 0, and you know, all of these derivatives, the n minus 1th derivative at time 0, to solve for uh, c1, c2, cn. Okay? So I'm going to use initial conditions. In this case, I can use the... Um, value of x and all of its derivatives at 0, and I can solve for what these coefficients have to be. There are other initial conditions that I could use, um, and we'll get into that. It you know, has to do with linear algebra and solving linear systems. Okay, so this is really general. This is um, like any high-order linear differential equation can be solved this way. And it can be solved in a computer. You can find these lambdas uh, in a computer, and you can simulate the system and see what it'll do for long times. OK, any questions? All right, this is just kind of the generalization of what we did last Friday, but for arbitrarily high order ODEs. OK, what's really interesting, though, is to start thinking about systems of differential equations. Um, so instead of one big equation with all of the derivatives in one expression, I might want a system of first-order linear equations. Okay? And this is going to be a little bit more general, so this will solve a, a more general class of problems. So we have our system, um, and I usually always divide through by the largest coefficient so that this would be, have a coefficient of 1. Right, I can just divide all of these coefficients by a n. Okay. So we started to see this uh, on Friday for, I think, a third order differential equation, we can introduce new dummy variables to write this as a system of n first-order coupled linear differential equations. Okay, so we're going to say x, uh, let's say x1 equals x, x2 equals x dot, x3 equals x double dot, and xn minus 1 equals x, uh, xn minus 1, yeah, let's say xn equals the n minus 1th derivative of x. Okay? And so what we have is x1 dot, x2 dot, x3 dot, uh, dot, dot, dot. 
OK, so x1 dot is x dot, which is x2. So x1 dot is just x2. x2 dot is x double dot. That's just x3. x3 dot is x4, and so on and so forth. And now this last equation is a little bit funny. Okay, so this last xn dot equation, xn was the n minus 1th derivative. So xn dot is the nth derivative. And it equals minus all of this stuff. Right, because the nth derivative plus all of this stuff equals 0. So xn dot equals minus a naught x1 minus a1 x2 minus a3 x a2 x3 yeah a naught x1 a1 x2 a2 x3 is x double dot and so on minus dot 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 minus a n minus 1 times xn Okay, so I get this pretty simple relationship for the first n minus 1 variables. And then the last row equation is actually pretty complicated. This is what codes up this entire differential equation, is in this last row. Okay, any questions about how I did this? I went a little fast. This is pretty important. Any questions at all? Does this make sense? OK, so this is kind of the generalization of what we did on Friday, but for an nth order polynomial. OK, and so what I can do is I can write this as a matrix system of equations now. OK, so I have some vector x1, x2, x3, dot, 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 down to x n. So I have n variables now instead of the single x and all of its derivatives that I had before. And ddt of this big vector is now some matrix times that big vector, x1, x2, x3, all the way down to xn. Okay, so the first row is pretty simple. x1 dot equals x2. So the row that multiplies this column vector that gives me x2 is 0, 1, 0, then a bunch of zeros. Okay, if I multiply this row by this column, I get x1 dot equals x2. Okay, that's my first equation. The next equation is x2 dot equals x3 then x3 dot equals x4, and so on and so forth. Okay, and now the last equation is the interesting equation. So this is kind of like a diagonal of ones, and then this last row equation is all of this stuff here. Okay, so we have xn dot equals minus a0 times x1, minus a1 times x2, minus a3 times, ugh, I keep messing this up, minus a2 times x3, and then finally minus a and minus 1 on the end. Okay, so it's a row of all of my coefficients, minus a0, minus a1, minus a2, dot, dot, dot. So we took our high order uh, linear differential equation, and we wrote it as a system of first order. So there's nothing but first derivatives in this expression, which is kind of nice. Okay? Um, and I can write this as a big vector y dot equals a big matrix A times my vector y. So this is kind of a general system. Yeah? On the bottom row, on the far right, that bottom corner? Uh, so there should be, so the row right above this is the x n minus 1's row. Yeah. Okay, and x n minus 1 dot is x n. 
So it should be 0, 0, 0, dot, 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 0, 1. No, so, so this will actually, you know, every single term here gets a coefficient, I think. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, so xn is the n minus 1th derivative. So xn dot does have an n minus 1th derivative term. Okay, so there are really coefficients on this entire bottom row. So try this for, like, actually by hand for a third order differential equation. Just make up coefficients and work it out, and you'll find out, you know, that the, this really is the general expression. And it's good to do that practice, because um, I always get a little confused about what the, the orders are in these. Okay, so what we did was we took a general single equation that was high order in x, and we wrote it as a system of first order differential equations in x. <coughs> but this matrix system of equations is actually much more general. This A could be anything. It doesn't necessarily need the special form of just having ones off of the diagonal and then a row of non-zero elements on the bottom. I could have a generic A that's completely dense, okay? And in lots of systems, I will. So in a fluid flow or in an epidemiology model, these states might be uh, how much Ebola is in each of our bodies. And this matrix might tell me who I come in contact with on a daily basis. Okay, so there's no reason that this has to be, have this weird, you know, off-diagonal form. I come in contact with all of you on a daily basis and everyone in ME on a daily basis and people on my bus route. And so my row has a bunch of non-zero entries for the people that I come in contact with. Maybe like all of the people in this room are the first hundred entries. And then all of the people in MEB are down here somewhere. Okay, so I could have a generic system in terms of a generic state, and it might be related by a big A matrix. So I want to be able to solve this type of system in general. Okay. So that's the general case. I'm just going to do a simple two by two uh, to make sure that this concept makes sense. Okay. So the example we've been working with was uh, x double dot plus 3x dot plus 2x equals 0. So this is a nice, simple uh, damped harmonic oscillator, except here the damping is positive, which means the system is going to blow up to infinity. Okay, so we're going to write this as a matrix system of equations and make sure that this A matrix makes sense. Okay, so I'm going to introduce a new dummy variable V for the velocity of this mass on a spring. All right, this is just the equation for my mass and the position X and v is its velocity, and v dot equals minus all of this stuff. So minus 2x minus 3x dot, which is the same as minus 2x minus 3v, because x dot is v. And so I can say ddt of my new state vector position and velocity is equal to some matrix times position, and velocity. Okay, so x dot is v, and v dot is minus 2x minus 3v. So this is something we've done before. This is my A matrix. This is my y vector, and my y vector. Okay? Now what's kind of neat is that the eigenvalues of this A matrix are really, really important. Okay, so what I'm going to tell you in this lecture and in the next lecture is that the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of this A matrix determine everything about the solution to this differential equation. And in fact, all differential equations y dot equals A times y. Every single one you can possibly think of will be determined by the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of A. Okay? So this is kind of an interesting fact that the eigenvalues of A are roots of the characteristic polynomial.
Okay, so how many of you remember how to compute the eigenvalue of a two by two matrix? How many of you don't quite remember how to do it by hand? It's okay. Okay, so we'll we'll do it by hand. Um, so to compute the eigenvalues of a matrix A, you just look at the equation determinant of A minus lambda to the identity equals zero. So we're going to derive this on Friday and really you know, look at why this is true. But for now, just take it for granted that solutions of this equation will be the eigenvalues. And so I have um, A. minus lambda times the identity. That's just lambda, 0, 0, lambda, right? Lambda times the identity matrix is equal to minus lambda 1, minus 2, minus lambda minus 3. Okay, A minus lambda I is this matrix. And I want to take the determinant of this matrix and set it equal to 0. So determinants... Uh, if I have some matrix B, which is B11, B12, B21, B22, then the determinant of B, you just multiply the diagonals and then subtract the product of the off diagonals. So that's B11, B22, minus B12, B21. Okay, that's the 2 by 2 formula for a determinant. So the determinant of A minus lambda I. is minus lambda times minus lambda minus 3. That's lambda squared plus 3 lambda minus the product of the off-diagonal terms. Minus minus 2 is plus 2 equals 0. So interestingly, the formula to solve for the eigenvalues of A is exactly my characteristic polynomial for my differential equation. Okay, this is my characteristic poly. And this is no coincidence. So eigen means characteristic. The eigenvalue is the solution of the characteristic polynomial. Um, eigenvalues and eigenvectors and differential equations were all kind of discovered near the same time because people wanted to solve systems of things that changed in time. Okay, And they found out that eigenvalues told them how these systems change in time, what grows, what decays, how fast, and in what direction. Okay. So this is kind of interesting. We can take our system of equations. We can write it as a matrix system of first order equations. And the eigenvalues of this A matrix are the roots of the characteristic equation. OK, good. So there's a really close connection between eigenvalues of the A matrix and solutions of this differential equation, e to the lambda t. These would be those lambdas. OK. Any questions? Nope. Okay, so in the notes, there's another example for a 3 by 3, sorry, a third order ODE, but I'm just going to skip it right now. You can try it out um, at home. Okay, so we really want to be able to solve general systems. x dot equals a times x, okay, or y dot equals a times y. It doesn't matter what I call this variable. So we want to be able to solve general systems of equation x dot equals a times x. So one reason we'd want to be able to solve them is because I can write any high order linear equation as a matrix system. That's one reason I'd want to solve this. Another reason is that there's a whole bunch more types of equation, types of systems that I can model this way. Okay, so the disease modeling is one, weather modeling. Um, maybe in my elastic beam example, um, there are additional quantities of interest on this. Maybe this is a beam that has uh, an electrostatic potential, and I want to know not only how the beam is moving, uh, but what the far field, you know, electromagnetics looks like. So 
there are tons and tons of systems that I can write in this matrix form. Usually X is fairly high dimensional, doesn't have to be. Um, and so I, I am going to now talk about this general system of equations and how we solve it. Okay. The first case I'm going to look at is extremely simple. So if the dynamics are uncoupled, And what I mean by uncoupled dynamics is that the dynamics for every single element of this vector x don't depend on any of the other elements. They only depend on themselves. Okay, so that is something like if I have x1, x2, dot, 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 to xn, ddt, then this only equals lambda1, bunch of zeros, Lambda 2, bunch of zeros, uh, dot, 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 lambda n, bunch of zeros. OK, does that make sense? So if my vector of values, if the time derivative only depends on that value, so x1 dot equals lambda 1 x1, x2 dot equals lambda 2 x2, x3 dot equals lambda 3 x3. They don't depend on any of the other variables. So a really simple system I like to think of, of how this would come about. So we thought about bunnies reproducing exponentially. That would be x dot equals lambda x. This is like a whole zoo of caged animals reproducing. Okay, so x1 are my bunnies, x2 are my lions, x3 are my zebras but nothing depends on any other population. There's no lions that can eat bunnies. Uh, it's just exponential growth or decay of each separate population. They're caged off. Okay? Now, if I knock down all the walls in my zoo, then I might start getting cross terms. Okay? I might start getting things eating each other or weird hybrid ligers. Um, okay, so this is a really, really simple system to solve because it's completely decoupled. I've just taken a bunch of first order equations and written them in a complicated way. Okay, so I have x1 dot equals lambda 1 x1, x2 dot equals lambda 2 x2, xn dot equals lambda n xn. So what's the solution to this? How do I solve this? system of differential equations in the simple case where the dynamics are decoupled and my A matrix is diagonal. Yeah, the eigenvalues are the values on the diagonal, and I can solve each of these single equations separately, and we know how to do that. Okay. So I have x1 at time t equals e to the lambda 1 t x1 naught, whatever my initial populations of bunnies is, times e to the lambda t. x2 at time t is e to the lambda 2 at time t times whatever my initial population of x2 is, and so on. xn at time t equals e to the lambda n t xn at 0. Okay, so they're completely decoupled. They don't depend at all on each other. Kind of nice. And so I can write this, you know, I can, I can take this very simple solution and I can write it in my convoluted matrix system of equations if I want. Okay, so I have x1 t, x2 of t, dot, 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 x, n of t. This is really vector x of t is equal to a matrix with exponentials on the diagonal, e to the lambda 1t, e to the lambda 2t, dot, 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 e to the lambda nt, zeros, zeros, times my initial conditions, x1 naught, x2 naught, dot, 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 xn not. Okay, so this is exactly the same as what I wrote here. This is the, the solution in matrix form. Okay, I have exponential to the lambda t's on the diagonal 
times initial conditions equals my solution at time t. And so what we're going to find is that we can write this as x of t vector equals e to the matrix a t times a vector of initial conditions. Now, this makes perfect sense when A is diagonal. Okay, so I just gave you the diagonal case. E to a diagonal matrix is just the diagonal of E to the things that were on the diagonal times a vector of initial conditions. What we haven't done is figured out what this means, this E to the AT means for a generic A, where the dynamics are coupled. Okay, that's where eigenvalues and eigenvectors are going to come in. Okay. I have time for questions before I go on. Are there any questions about this? Is this stuff that most of you have seen before? Okay, how many of you have not seen this before? Okay. Um, okay. So what this tells us is that right, we want to solve a generic system x dot equals ax for a really nasty a, just any a that you give me. I want to be able to solve this. And what we observe from our first case is that if a is diagonal, this is really, really easy to solve. Right? All of the solutions decouple. So what I want to do is I want to find a change of coordinates that makes it so that my original system, x dot equals ax, looks like a diagonal system. Okay, I want to diagonalize or uncouple my dynamics through a coordinate transformation. Okay. Right, so we want this generic system, x dot equals ax, and so we need a coordinate transformation. Coordinate transformation, I hope, starts sounding a lot like linear algebra, right? Matrices are coordinate transformations. So we need a change of coordinates. x equals some matrix t times some new variable z. OK, so I had my dynamics, my differential equation, written in terms of the variable x. I want to write my differential equation in terms of a new coordinate system, z, so that my differential equation looks diagonal. So that um, z dot is equal to some diagonal matrix times z. So what I'm going to do here is derive the eigenvalue equation. I could just tell you what eigenvalues and eigenvectors are and that they are important. But there is a way to motivate it. And this is probably what people did historically, was they wanted to take, they wanted to solve this nasty system x dot equals ax. They realized that if they could find a coordinate transformation, some really, really special change of coordinates into a variable z, so that z dot equaled a diagonal matrix times z, they would definitely know how to solve it, because that's easy. Okay? And so what we're going to do is derive a condition on t so that this is diagonal. Does that make sense? So we want the special coordinate transformation t so that our dynamics in z are diagonal, and we're going to derive conditions on what that t has to look like. OK, so this is the fun part. Um, OK, x dot equals t times z dot. t is just a matrix. z is our variable. It's the thing that can change. So t z dot equals x dot. And what does x dot equal? a times x. Good. OK, but what does x equal? t times z. OK, so this is kind of a, we're going to do a lot of substitution. And this should make sense after you do it a couple of times. But it might feel a little, a little weird, like I'm just arbitrarily picking things to substitute in. OK, so I know that I want to get an equation entirely in terms of z. OK, so I'm going to take my x dot equation. And I know that I can either write that as tz dot 
or I can write it as a times x. Those are two equivalent ways of writing x dot. Now, a times x is equal to a t z. So that gives me t z dot equals a t z. Please stop me uh, if I skip something, do something wrong, if I am confusing. Like, this is the part where you should ask questions. Okay? So t times z dot equals a times t times z. Now we have an equation entirely in z. And I'm going to, for now, just assume that I can invert t. This is not always true, but I'm going to assume that I can take the inverse of t. So there's kind of a, an assumption here. And now I have z dot equals t inverse a t z. And this is the thing that I want to equal d. I want t inverse times a times t to equal a diagonal matrix. So by any means necessary, I'm going to cook up a t so that t inverse a t equals a diagonal matrix. That's what I want. OK, good. So t inverse a t equals d. Now the last step, and this is pretty simple, I'm just going to multiply both of these on the left by the matrix t. So when you multiply numbers, it doesn't matter if you multiply on the left or the right. You know, if I have like 5 times this, that's the same as this times 5. But when you multiply matrices, it does matter if you multiply them on the left or on the right. So matrices don't commute. A times B is not always equal to B times A. So I'm going to multiply both of these on the left by T. And I'm going to get A T equals T D. OK, so the t that will specifically diagonalize, or the coordinate transformation that will make my dynamics diagonal, is the t that satisfies this equation. And this is the eigenvalue equation. This is kind of the matrix form of the eigenvalue equation. How many of you have seen the eigenvalue equation in this kind of matrix form? OK, good. So I'm just going to write it out because I think it's nice to see what this looks like expanded. OK, so I have a big matrix A. And I have a big matrix T, which has columns T1, T2, up to Tn. And that's going to equal that same big matrix T, T1, T2, up to Tn times what I hope is now a diagonal matrix. Okay, so this is going to be lambda 1, lambda 2, up to lambda n with zeros everywhere else. Okay, so this is d, t, t, a. Now, every single column of t is an eigenvector of a corresponding to that particular eigenvalue lambda. Okay, so Lambda 1 is an eigenvalue of A corresponding to the eigenvector T1. Let me write this out. OK. So forget all of these other columns. Let's just say I have A times T1. That should be the first column on this right-hand side, which is lambda 1 T1. So A times T1 equals lambda T1. I also get you know, a times t2 equals lambda t2, and so on and so forth. So these columns t and values lambda are my eigenvalues and eigenvectors of the matrix A. OK, so what does this mean geometrically? What is the kind of big picture takeaway of this exercise? Any of you? I think of it like in terms of like the stress. Like if you were to reorient like the directions of your stress, it's like the maximum in each of those directions. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. Um, so that, that's a really nice way of thinking about it. So we have some dynamics. We know that our state x is going to change as a function of that state x. 
but there are certain directions given by the columns of t so that if I started purely in that direction, x will stay in that direction forever. Okay, so my system x, um, so these columns t define, essentially they define vectors in Rn, in the n-dimensional vector space. They define these directions where the dynamics act in a decoupled way. Okay, so if I started in the t1 direction, my dynamics would be decoupled, and I would just have e to the lambda 1t times t1 at time 0. And the same thing at t2 and t3 and t4. So what this coordinate transformation means is the eigenvectors of my A matrix define a new coordinate system. Okay? The eigenvectors of A, the columns of the eigenvectors of A, define a new coordinate system. And if I wrote my dynamics in that coordinate system, all of the dynamics in every direction would be completely decoupled. If I started in the first coordinate direction, the t1 direction, I would always go in the t1 direction forever. I would just decay or increase in the t1 direction forever. And it wouldn't depend at all on t2 or t3 or t4. Okay? So what we have here is a way of deriving a coordinate transformation t from the eigenvectors of our A matrix where our dynamics become completely diagonal. And we know how to solve those diagonal systems. Okay, so we're going to do some examples, and we're going to like actually see what this T and D look like for real physical systems, like an inverted pendulum, uh, the spring mass damper system, and some things like that. Um, okay, any questions before I do a quick MATLAB demo? Okay. Okay, so the last uh, the last bit of this is kind of you know, kind of neat. So this is really, really easy to code up in MATLAB. MATLAB has built-in eigenvalue and eigenvector solvers that are super fast. Uh, so in MATLAB, you would just say t comma d equals eig of a. That's it. Right, so we did this the hard way using math. But in MATLAB, you can do it the easy way. Right? You can solve for the columns, this big matrix T of eigenvectors, and D will be a diagonal matrix with lambda 1 through lambda n using the eig command. Okay? Something interesting I want you to think about is if A, sorry, if D equals T inverse AT, then what does A equal? Well, I left multiply by t, and I write multiply by t inverse. So it's t d t inverse. So what is a squared? Well, it's t d t inverse times t d t inverse. Those cancel. And I get t d squared t inverse. OK, a cubed is the same deal. I'm going to get t d t inverse, t d t inverse, t d t inverse, those cancel, and I have t d cubed t inverse. Okay? So what I want you to do before the next lecture is to think about if I wanted to compute a matrix E to the A T, where this is a matrix A, I can always write things as a Taylor expansion. So the way that we define this matrix exponential, I'm going to define it as the identity matrix plus a plus 1 over 2a squared plus 1 over 3 factorial a cubed plus dot, 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 forever. And using this property that a squared and a cubed and a to the n is really, really simple when you diagonalize it, you should be able to get a really, really simple expression for e to the at, which is something like t e to the diagonal t times matrix t inverse. Okay, so I want you to work this out before next lecture. This is uh, one of the coolest kind of properties in linear algebra is that when you use the eigenvalues and eigenvectors of a to diagonalize the system, 
then it gives you a really easy way of computing the matrix exponential, which is the solution of our differential equation in general. So we'll go into more detail. I'm going kind of quick. I want you to work this out so that we're on the same page uh, on, on Friday. And just the last thing I'm going to show you is how to actually use the eigenvalue and eigenvector command in MATLAB. Okay, all of this is online, uh, and you can also see the lecture notes. Come on. Good. Okay, so for the little system of equations we were working with, I think we had A, uh, what was it? So for the second order differential equation, the damped spring mass system, I think we had something like this. A equals 0, 1, minus 2, minus 3. Right? That was the same as x double dot plus 2, uh, plus 3x dot plus 2x equals 0. And so now if I say T D equal I of A, super simple, I get the diagonal, so I get D is a diagonal matrix where the diagonal entries are the eigenvalues of A. They're also the roots of the characteristic polynomial. And the columns of T are eigenvectors of A. Okay, The columns of T are eigenvectors of A. So if I take A times the first column of T, ugh, sorry, you can't see this very well. Um, if I take A times the first column of T, it should equal lambda 1 times the first column of T. It should just flip the signs. It just flipped the signs. Okay, it's the same thing. If I take uh, A times the second column, it should flip the signs and multiply each of these by 2. It should, it should increase the scaling by 2. So A times the second column of T, right? It's the same direction with the signs flipped times 2. Okay, it's lambda 2 times that column. Now what's kind of neat is if I take the inverse of t times a times t, I should get my diagonal matrix back, right? That was d equals inverse of t times a times t. So you really can actually uh, compute with this, you know, in MATLAB. It's pretty simple using the eig command, okay? Okay, that's it for today. I'll see you all on Friday, and we'll go deeper into eigenvalues and eigenvectors.